Hello everyone and welcome back to my Beyond History series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.3. In this episode we begin with an approach to Europa. I handled two maneuvers off camera because they were trivial and I had mentioned them in previous episodes anyway, so you should have known they were coming. It was the one to get this particular flyby of Europa with this AJS-1 and also a maneuver with the Titan shot. Uh, we have to actually do another correction maneuver in 10 days with that. And so, anyway, let's uh, handle this flyby of Europa, and we will proceed from there. We have a lot to talk about. There have been other developments, including the unlocking of uh, technologies, and but I'll handle that uh, during some of the dry spells. But right now, approaching Europa is exciting. And this will be the last mission, or last part of the mission for this particular probe. Now I did uh, get rid of the remote tech plugin and instead add the stock communication modules to each of those files. Uh, winged on the comments to one of the videos provided his own batch of configurations for the parts from remote tech to uh, add those modules. Though that version is for a um, later version of KSP than I have because it has the categories. Yeah, it'll probably work out as long as you change the categories. But anyway, long story short, Remote Tech Plugin is gone, and we will make sure that everything works fine. This will be a good way to do it. And hopefully it'll even fix that issue with the particular experiments that we had before. Um, thankfully, uh, transmitting the, technolo uh, the technology, the information seems to go a lot quicker with this without remote tech. So, go figure. Okay, Europa is getting its close-up now. We're still over ridged plains. We need to be over a different biome to get something new. Uh, oh, oh, there was a... Ah, uh, there was a thing. Why does it seem like there are cities on Europa? Uh-oh. That's very suspicious. Well, we basically just got ridged plains as far as space just above Europa is concerned. We didn't get another biome. There was briefly a different biome, but it was too quick to catch. And now we're high over it. So not as much science as maybe we should have gotten, but we are going to try other things with Europa anyway. I don't know. Already city textures on Europa. That was... that's interesting. What did that one probe that we landed on Europa do anyway? Still down there. It's right there. Even though it's called Ganymede Lander. There's no more science unless we get a different biome here. And we're about to leave Europa's SOI. There we go. And Jupiter's equatorial bands. Anyway, this satellite is now basically done. Uh, we'll, we'll leave it here just in case there's another opportunity. It might accidentally smack into something, but we, we are a little... No, we're, we're pretty much in line with everything else. Might smack into something, but plenty protection. Anyway, there are cities on Europa already. It's fine. Okay, so let's move on to uh, the final maneuver with the Titan shot before it encounters Titan. Though we really need to pay attention to tack life support and the fact that Moonport 1 is now down to 30 days. So, why don't we just launch that first? Let's launch the Moonport resupply mission before we deal with uh, the Titan shot. We've got time. It should reach the station in time. And just in case something happens to it, we might want some time to build another Moonport resupply mission. So yeah, probably a good idea. Okay, so here we are with our Moonport resupply mission, but this is a legacy mission, so I don't really have a script prepared for this particular rocket, oddly enough. Uh, so we're going to just use the baseline launch script, and I'll uh, just stage off the boosters manually, because uh, the baseline launch script doesn't know about the boosters particularly. Uh, so, yep, we're just going to save that. And let's see how it does. It might go horribly wrong, who knows. But fortunately it does not take us long to build a rocket like this. If I've queued up two more, and you can see the build time is only eight days. So we could 
we could churn one out pretty quickly if something goes wrong with this one and still get the Moonport resupplied in time. So anyway, on that note, let's say run Moonport, uh, not Moonport, Moonport, and see what happens. All right, off it goes. Good times, it's a good start. We do still have test flight in here for the time being. So we've got some other missions to take care of after the Titan mission. We've got this Exo Moon Explorer and another AJS mission. The one that hasn't been decommissioned. Other things going on. Uh, I've added a few more technologies to be unlocked. We've got closed cycle hydrolox engines, long-term habitation, actuators, and uh, large segment solids and mature stage combustion, which includes the RD-170. We are uh, building an upgrade to our VAB, which hopefully gives us a third build slot. Anyway, my goal is to have all the buildings, except for the admin building, completely unlocked. I added some extra build points, so we're building stuff quicker now. I think we've got 10 build points per second for both of our slots right now. Okay, the boosters perform nominally, and separation. Uh, still a pause on staging that I don't need, but everything else is good. And actually, the timer is green and everything. As I surmised, uh, removing remote tech has helped. I mean, it's quite obvious that it's helped. There are still pauses in the game, but overall, I think uh, there is less lag going on. The way my KOS scripts work is I start off with the baseline launch script and then modify them based on their staging, like those boosters. I'd indicate uh, when the boosters should stage. Usually for boosters like that, it would be uh, thrust staging, so once the thrust goes below a certain level, it'll tell it'll be told to shut off uh, the engines. Why is that overheating? We've launched this a few times before. I guess it's going shallower than I normally do. Oh, well, we've got a bit of a problem here. Well, it would seem like KOS needs to be told. Oh, that's funny. Needs to be told to launch this steeper than what we did just there. Um, clearly that was too hot to handle as it was. Hmm. Interestingly, the KOS script does have a condition where if the dynamic pressure is too high, it'll throttle down and everything. Um, okay, well, anyway. Uh, let's just cancel. Okay. Well, we have learned something. The backups will delay, of course, our Science Lab 1 that's going to be attached to the Earth Orbit Station. We'll build both backups, just in case this whole KOS thing is going to take some effort, you know. Okay, well, it's going at 90 meters per second, and it died. Okay. Right, well, anyway. We'll try and launch another one. Um, maybe we can get it launched before the Titan shot. Let me ch check the curb alarm clock to, ch to see if that's possible. Okay, Space Center. Okay, I just handled the Titan shot maneuver off to the side. It's now aimed at Titan and just above Titan's atmosphere. So just above 600 kilometers is its periapsis in Titan SOI. And we'll get to that in 15 days, I think. Um, in order to adjust the steepness on this, all I have to do is change this number. And so right now I was pretty darn shallow. So uh, 0 0.5. I'm going to change it to 0 0.8, which is sort of standard. Um, we'll see if that helps. Hopefully that helps enough. This is actually sort of a fine-tuned steepness thing. There are more coarse ways of changing the steepness with this particular launch script. Hopefully this will be enough. We'll see. Run Moonport. So here we go again. 
hopefully... Oh, wait. Abort, 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 abort. We need to make sure we line up the moon first. Okay, and we have launched. Okay, the boosters were fine. Separation. And we continue on. We are noticeably steeper this time. Okay, it looks like we're through the possibility of heating at least. Now the question is whether this stage is going to run out first or whether the fairings are going to need to be separated first. It's a tight call since the fairings are supposed to separate at 105 kilometers. I think the fairings are going to go first. Oh, but they failed to go off? Oh. Well. I'll just put an extra... Yeah. Alright, might need to reconsider when the fairings separate, but... We're continuing on. Everything is okay. It's okay. Okay, we are about to reach orbit. It's trying to limit the vertical speed to zero so that we get a nice round orbit, circular orbit. It won't be quite circular, but it'll be good enough. Okay, 277 by 234. And let's plot a transfer to the moon. Okay, settling the fuel down for our lunar transfer. And ignition. And off we go. Uh, the Delta V down there is not reading properly. We will finish up this stage and we'll have to use some of the fuel in the little transfer vehicle in order to finish the transfer. Um, taking a look here. Well, that is a stage that was supposed to burn up, but we recovered the boosters. Interesting to note that the parachutes on the boosters are on one side of the booster so that it lands flat horizontally. But still, need to come up with some better reusability stuff around here. Anyway, the boosters did get recovered according to stage recovery. Okay, that's the end of the J2 stage. Separation and ignition. And now we have 3,000 meters per second with uh, this particular stage, but we're actually supposed to transfer sound of fuel to the station so that we can refuel stuff like the landers. Okay, on to Lunar SOI. Well, let's check our schedule here. I believe we have enough time. Let's just check. Uh, five days to our periapsis, so yes, nothing else going on before then. But we're busy, busy. We are a busy, busy space agency so gotta manage our time appropriately okay node and we are about to retro burn for orbit all right ignition the might of four gemini lander engines bringing this to orbit okay we are allowing the station to catch up with us and okay We'll be there. The station will still be behind after the next go around, it looks like. Or no, that, that was reading that wrong. Okay, it's 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 past us. We need to fix that. Alright, alright. Retrograde even more. My mistake. Okay, we are currently moving towards the station at a good clip, but we need to head on over to the station to free up a docking berth for this. Well, actually, there are many locations it can dock on either one of these, but we don't want three resupply vessels docked at the same time. So let's try and resolve this whole situation here. This one seems to be the most empty, so let's just make sure that this is all empty or at least uh, of the food, water, and oxygen. We'll keep its fuel so that it can deorbit itself. And as long as that's not pointing at the mission coming in, we should be all right. 
Looks good. And it is deorbiting. Okay, it has a negative periapsis. We're not going to follow it. We need to focus on this mission. Off it goes. And we should be ready for docking, though I would like to see which docking port would be best. I would like to leave one of the propellant only docking ports and one of the Apollo uh, docking ports free. So we don't want to dock this on a on like the last propellant only docking port. It's a small station so far, so we gotta manage those. Turn that off and docked. Once the game allows it, yes. Alright, we are docked. And the station now has 147 days of supplies. We should really make a larger supply vehicle so we don't have to do this so often. But of course that requires a larger rocket, which takes longer to build. And of course causes more problems if we happen to lose that rocket for one reason or another. But for now, we've got what we've got here. And yeah, let's turn to the next thing. Which should be our, oh well wait, it's this uh, Exo Moon Explorer, which has a maneuver node in 20 hours, so we need to hop on to that. Okay, so we are here with the Exo Moon Explorer, and this is supposed to encounter Triton. And we would see what happens after that. I don't know if we could land on Triton, but we would at least want to encounter it. So it's going all the way out to Neptune, but right now this particular maneuver is to make sure our flyby of Jupiter is correct such that we get flung to Neptune. So this is a Jupiter flyby adjustment. And you can see all our other missions on their way to Jupiter all taking advantage of the Voyager window. This stage here doesn't have any RCS on it so the only RCS is coming out of here. Would like to limit how much we use of that of course but it will be necessary to settle the fuel down and ignition. And you know what? We should probably switch all but one of those off at this point, considering the nature of the burns that we're likely to do from here on out. Okay, that's as good as. Oh, great. Um. Well, the thing is that maneuver is after we encounter Jupiter. It's really a 311 meter per second maneuver, but it's reading 12,889 because that's how much difference Jupiter makes. <laughs> so it's a big difference. Hmm. Well, let me just uh, take a look at what's going on near Jupiter. Oh. But we're, I think we're crashing into Jupiter right now. Are we? No, no, uh, we're fine. We're right on the correct periapsis, I think. Well, we'll find out when we get there. Both of those numbers are changing quite dramatically. This is after 239 years. So, what that means is we get into an orbit we fly by Neptune, and then in 239 years, we'll fly by Jupiter again. How's about that? Okay, so let's add this maneuver. I've been doing most of the maneuvers off camera, but... Oh, well, uh, that was a maneuver, though. I, I want the SOI change. Right. That's when we enter Jupiter SOI, so we will want to take a look at that when it happens. Okay, so this is all settled. Okay, here we are with this AJS-1, and it is obviously not as good as the other AJS-1, at least uh, it hasn't captured around Jupiter yet, and it looks like it's going to be using most, if not all, of its fuel to do so. I don't know if we're going to get that particular Callisto encounter that we're trying for. Uh, we'll, we'll do what we can, but the first job is just to capture first, and the capture Delta V looks like 2,148, and right now we have 1,664 visible, though we do have some locked fuel here, but that's RCS fuel, so don't know. Let's try it out.
I'm allowing for extra time because I don't know how long the RCS needs to burn for. But this is obviously not situated in the best in the best way for a Jupiter capture or doing any particular missions. But if we can manage it, let's do that. We'll see how much delta V that RCS has. So selling the fuel down and ignition. After this, I want to launch the Science Lab 1 to our station around the Earth, and then we are going to deal with the Titan shot entering Titan's atmosphere. Okay. Separation. And, well, it's tough to call it ignition when it's RCS firing, but that's basically what's going to happen here. Once we unlock the tanks, if the game allows me to, Okay, there we go, and there's a tank in the probe. Hmm, it looks like we have substantial delta V. If you take a look at that, it's the hundredth digit that is ticking down. And it's ticking down about the same rate as the tens digit here. Um, it leads me to believe that we have about 372 meters per second of delta V thereabouts as an estimate. Okay, well the verdict is it's going to be really 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 close. You can see the delta V difference there and our fuel getting depleted and we're focused on Callisto and... wait that's our current orbit. Oh wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Shut down. We have an approach to Callisto. Okay, well, it's not the best approach, but it's something. And that's probably more than we were going to get with this mission, if not for the lucky positioning of Callisto anyway. So we have captured around Jupiter, and is there any way... Um, we've set that as a target. Is there any way we can bring that down? Let's say we add a maneuver, and... I'm just going to use up all the fuel getting as close to Callisto as I can. And that's the end of it. Okay, well, there we are. And we'll come back to this once it gets into Callisto SOI and do the science. And that will be after our Science Lab 1 launch. But I don't know if Science Lab... Well, actually it'll be before our Science Lab 1 launch. Because Science Lab 1 has to roll out to the launch pad. So... Yeah, let's just, let's just follow this in right now. We're here anyway. We're here in the Jupiter system. Let's go in there and do the science thing. Okay, Science Lab 1 is complete. So, let's see if we can roll it out from here. Instead of going back there, yes we can. So, we're going to add a Science Lab to our station. Okay, here we are in Callisto SOI. Where is the moon? There it is. Callisto's SOI is pretty darn big compared to the inner moons of Jupiter. Let's do some visual observations. Oh, oh there we go. High over Callisto. No comms... Mmm. I thought we had solved that problem, but it looks like this Pioneer antenna does not have the stock one. Okay. So just adding the stock comms to the remote tech stuff does not add it to this. All right, well, let me restart the game having added the module to this one. And then we should be able to do the science, hopefully. Uh, yeah, we'll see. Okay, I didn't actually find an entry that corresponds to this Pioneer 10 slash 11 class antenna, but I did find another antenna that didn't seem to have the right thing and it was a part added by uh, Realism Overhaul but it didn't actually specify the name Pioneer 10 slash 11 class antenna so I'm hoping that it is that antenna that got renamed to this by some other file. It's very complicated with all these configuration files. Uh, where is Callisto anyway? Well, yeah, we're still pretty far away from Callisto, technically, aren't we? We're in the SOI, but um, we're a ways away. Oh, I guess when I quit, it didn't bring us... I had brought us a little bit closer to Callisto, but 
seems like we're far away again. Oh well. Yeah, we had actually used up our fuel, but it doesn't have us empty here. So it missed one of my burns when I quit. Okay, well, fair enough. Let's try and uh, get some science done here. Let's see. Log visual observations. Okay, high over Callisto. Transmit. Okay, well, that works. All right, so whatever I did, it fixed it. That's all we care about. So apparently we haven't done a flyby of Callisto before, otherwise we would have done some of these, but it's all new. So, first time flying by Callisto. Okay, let's see. Let's get closer. Or as close as we're going to get. I mean, 7,245 kilometers. I want to be careful not to... Oh, well... Uh, I think we were. it was cratered Midlands before, and now it's cratered Highlands. Let's see. That doesn't matter. It's really just an orbital perturbation experiment. Glad to see that that's working. Cratered Highlands. It is new. So, not as much science as I would have liked. I don't know if the periapsis that we brought to after burning this fuel would have been enough to get close to Callisto. It was like 1,500 kilometers. Okay, it looks like we're going to be done with Callisto. We still got some science out of it. So this probe is not a total loss. And back out to Jupiter orbit. Okay, that's done. Next, we will launch Science Lab 1 to our station. Alright, we are lined up with our Earth orbit station. And this module is being launched on a Fiji-11 rocket. And that's the one where we try to recover the F1 engine. And so here we go. Run Fiji 11. Just a reminder, Fiji 11 means that there's one F1 and one J2. That's why it's 11. There is a Fiji 21 coming up soon. That one will launch our Gemini lander, not the mini Gemini lander, but an actual Gemini capsule that lands on the moon. And so that'll carry two people, two Kerbals. Kerbals are people too. That particular spacecraft uh, with the Delta V that it takes to land on the moon and get it back into lunar orbit is 10 tons. Which is pretty good, considering our mini Gemini lander, you know, with the tiny little Gemini lander can that everybody thinks is cheaty. Um, <laughs> uh, that, that's a six-ton craft. That's a six-ton craft that uh, carries one Kerbal and has 5,400 meters per second. The Gemini lander with the proper Gemini capsule has uh, 4,700 meters per second and carries two Kerbals, but it weighs 10 tons. So... The trick with those little landers is now I know about how much margin I need, and so I think the 4,700 meters per second with the Gemini, the two-person Gemini, will work out, but it'll be, it'll be tight. Obviously, I don't have much room for error with that. So they'll have to be done a little bit more precisely than we've been doing with the little landers. Okay, getting ready for first stage separation. Well, engine separation first, then first stage separation. And the ignition of the J2. Everything looking good so far? Okay, fairing separation shows us the module. It's got two little uh, Gemini lander engines on it for propulsion and plenty of Arizine and N204 for, or for the rendezvous. I think it'll be fine. It's got the Delta Avionics unit and even though we don't have remote tech, I still put the commutatrons on. And that, If remote tech was here, that would have been enough to maintain communication with this. Okay, we are about to make orbit here. Everything looks good. And there it is. The J2 has done its job. We'll uh, just separate it off now. 
And let's make sure our panels are out. Okay, we have entered render range of Spaceport 2 and things have slowed down a bit. We are now on a yellow timer and everything. Um, we are sort of on a tight schedule here. Ooh, the game is paused again. It paused, of course, when entering the render range. But now it's pausing again. It's a quick save, it looks like. Uh, we're on a tight schedule because Titan Shot is going to enter the sphere of influence of Titan in 45 minutes. So, boy, we're a busy, busy space agency. If only NASA was this busy. You know, they were uh, docking something when... When an, I'm sure it's happened before, when an uh, interplanetary probe is reaching its destination, they were in the middle of docking to the space station, maybe, at some point. Okay, actually, let's, uh, yeah, let's get rid of some of this velocity that we've got. I've uh, made liberal use of our fuel to get this here. It's still pretty heavy, you can see we're almost 18 tons. Okay, so taking a look at our station with the science lab approaching, I think I want to dock the science lab to this docking port on the opposite side from the old Spaceport 1. So it'll sort of counterbalance Spaceport 1 like that. I think that would be the best arrangement right now. It'll sort of get in the way of this Apollo docking port. But um, in any case, it's got another do Apollo docking port on its opposite end, so something else could dock over here once it's on. So I think that'll be all right. There's serious lag around the station right now. Once we dock, I'll try and remember to check how many parts it is. We need a place to store inventory so that the Kerbals can remove the excess solar panels that we don't need anymore. May even some of the RCS ports. That'll reduce the lag, I think. Okay, we have contact and docking. It's a big module, as you can see, in relation to the rest of the station. And it is docked. And we've got a lot of little thrusters that we need to turn off, but let's start off, let's start by shutting these two down. We'll sort the rest out some other time. Got Kazu Kerman and Alan Kerman, neither of whom is a scientist right now. We might want to transport some scientists up here. Let's take a look at how many parts this is. 383. 383 parts, 144 tons. Well, heck, considering this 383 parts, I suppose it's no surprise that it's causing some lag. Yep. We might want to trim the... Now, of course, some of those parts are the the Orpheus spacecraft. So once that undocks, of course, once that undocks, another one will be coming in. So, so yeah, lots of parts. Larger solar panel. Ooh, these are dislocated. That's not good. That's probably infernal robotics going on right there. We'll pretend we didn't see that and hope it doesn't glitch out, huh? Fortunately, we do have other solar arrays here, just in case, but if those glitch out, they could tear apart the station or something. I've seen some weird stuff when it comes to uh, Inferno Robotics. So, yeah, let's just not talk about that. Anyway, so this is our station right now with the Science Lab, and uh, the final thing we need to deal with right now is the Titan Shot mission, and it's going to be entering Titan's SOI in 32 minutes, so we had better turn to it now. Alright, for those wondering, I'm sure somebody might wonder what it would take to get into orbit around Titan at this point, uh, given that our orbit around Saturn is like this. And the answer is currently a mere 2,105 meters per second. And that that's actually pretty good, and it would be great if we could do that. Unfortunately, we do not have 2,105 meters per second. I wish we did. But uh, it does mean that our little lander probably won't get fried when it enters the atmosphere of Titan, though. Uh, it does have a heat shield on it, but we would like it to not get fried. So that's it's helpful that that uh, we're only we're not going that fast. We're approaching. Well, our orbit around Saturn is 
6,300, but we haven't entered the SOI of Titan yet, so let's do that first. Let's get rid of this alarm and enter the SOI of Titan. There we are, and we're going on entry, we are going 3,746, let's say. Now, everything else we have to do right now is tricky. We can't do that 2,100. We'll uh, keep the surface info for now. I want to use this 500 for something, and so we might as well slow down. And in the process, dip into the atmosphere. So that's about the delta V that we've got. And that will dip our little lander into the atmosphere. We need to actually tilt. I don't know how far into the atmosphere we want to get, but let's say 400 kilometers. Will that slow it down, though? I mean, it's got 0.6 atmospheres. Its atmospheric height is 600 kilometers. And I don't know for sure how deep we need to get. Whatever it is, we could get that deep, but where's the line between capturing and getting fried, basically, is what I want to know. Um, I, I, I've done it before with somebody else's probe. I think it was Satellite999's probe on my Twitch channel. I might have uh, launched a probe in the Titan before myself, but that would have been years ago. Not that I would make it... Well, it could make a difference, depending on which version of... KSP we're on could make a difference. I don't know what exactly would keep it from getting fried. I'm gonna go with 120 kilometers. This biosample we can't bring down with us, so observe biosample. Let's just do that here, 25. Sometime or another we'll do a biosample closer to Titan. Alright, uh, off. Insufficient avionics. Well, shucks. Um, this is heavier than I thought. Well, anyway, um, record impact data. That's new. Let's continue doing science. Ignore the lack of avionics for now. I don't. I don't think uh, MechJeb cares anyway. Okay. Um, well, we're at seventy-three kilometers. We could try and use this to raise our periapsis. Uh, we've got these thrusters here. But it's time to decouple our little lander. Oh, those commutrons are sort of caught. Hmm. Right. This is a problem. I did not foresee this problem. Uh, maybe if we toggle the magnetometer here. We could just time warp. I think it'll be fine if they time warp. Um, yeah. Okay, it's away now. Great. No, that's spent. This still has electric charge. Good. <laughs> Worried for a sec there. Um, we could leave these out, but we might as well pull them in. It's not uh, not necessary. So there's our little lander, and we are going to unlock the fuel here. Just hydrazine. Oh, I sort of made a little bit of a mistake here. Uh, obviously, this is blocking these little thrusters. I did not mean to do that. I'm going to arm the parachute. Let's take a look at the info for the parachute. 0.2 atmospheres, deployment altitude 2,500 for that one. Oh, these are Earth-like deployments. Well, the atmosphere of Titan is 0.6 atmospheres. It shouldn't be too bad, he said. Who knows? Who knows? Okay, so... Let's see, can it point retrograde? It'd be better off if it could use those thrusters. Oh, well, those still seem to work. We can boost ourselves up, it looks like. Well, this is interesting. We could... Oh, but it's not orienting well. Okay, so that's 100... 
20 kilometers. But it's not pointing prograde very well. I should have put more thrusters at the base there. But remember, that's mass. And this thing, the core, has a mass limit of 0.2 tons. Let's get back to our orbiter. Not, I mean, our Saturn orbiter right now. And for this, we still have insufficient avionics. But that's alright. All we need to do is go real negative. Unlock this fuel. And we need to save it from certain death right now in Titan's atmosphere. So, throttle up. Oh, we can't throttle. Okay, pressing H. Oh, pressing N. Uh, other way. Other way. Okay, that should be it safe. Doesn't need to boost any more than that. The only instruments that this has that the little lander doesn't are the magnetometer and the orbital telescope. I'm not too hot on the idea of switching back to it as we get close, because I'm going to be far more interested in what the little uh, lander is doing. You know, I'm going to F5. Uh, just in case this blows up, I may try it at a different periapsis. I mean, how many uh, we're going to have to wait a long time before I get another shot at Titan here. And by that time, I'll forget everything about this mission, including what periapsis I tried in the first place. I really don't want that decoupler, but it's with us now. Obviously, this was supposed to be sort of capsule-shaped, was the idea. It's got a lot of hydrazine. It could make quite a few corrections if it wanted to. Okay, here we go. Hold your breath. Going in now. It could, like, explode immediately, we could hit a brick wall. We're only going 3,900 meters per second, though, so hopefully not. One good thing about having the extra fuel, though, is if it turns out that we, uh, we need to go around, if we capture but we don't actually land, we can do that. Okay, upper atmosphere. Let's see if we can transmit without breaking the commutrons off. Yep, still good. Uh, gravity scan can't be done right now. Temperature scan, though, that can be done. 102 signs in the upper atmosphere of Titan. The drag is bringing our periapsis down here. So I'm pretty confident that we're eventually going to hit the ground. Oh, we've got flame effects. Standard practice says do not physical time warp when there are flame effects. One concern about having a decoupler on there is that it might cause us to topple. Pretty sure I had the heat shield heavy enough to counteract the mass of the hydrazine here or the parachute, but I don't know about the decoupler. It looks okay though, right now. And we have captured around Titan. And it looks definitely like we're coming in for a landing. Well, it looks like we're going to have a long trip to the surface. We're only going 200 meters per second right now. And we're still at 125 kilometers. Interesting atmosphere modeling on Titan. It's really that thick this high up? It's pretty darn thick. Do we even need a parachute by the time we get to the surface? I don't know. We'll find out. Oh, we've got the tiniest little parachute ever. Considering how small this is, I hope you appreciate how tiny, truly tiny, that, that parachute is. Yep. But, it's a good sign. Okay, we have full parachute deployments, and that brings us to 1.3 meters per second. That is slow. But anyway, uh, we're flying over Titan's lowlands. I think we've already done all the science until we get to the surface. And it's going to take a little bit longer to get to the surface, but we will be patient. Okay, we have set down on Titan 
rocking back and forth a bit situation it says landed so all we have to do is the telemetry analysis 157 science okay um, transmit okay uploading data and fulfilled uncrewed Titan landing is done let's get the other signs though come on come on let me do it so first try 120 kilometers was fine and uh, good times good times 210 signs for the micrometeorite detector radiation gives us another 210 Thermometer gives us another 210. And perturbation actually can be done from Titan's lowlands, 175. Okay, let's uh, revisit our flyby portion. Okay, yes, it is on the way out. There's Titan, there's Saturn, and our altitude is increasing, but we're still in the SOI. Slog, visual, nope. I think the only thing that we can do right now is going to be the orbital perturbation experiment high over Titan's Midlands and we've got that 50 science. Okay, uh, so there we have it. We successfully landed a tiny little probe on the surface of Titan after many other activities. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did enjoy this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.